All right, a little bit about the Hubsons. I got addicted to these little things um, online. They're super cheap, and parts for them are super replaceable and also super cheap um, and super available. They are just everywhere. eBay, Amazon, Banggood, um, lots of various places. Um, I got all my stuff on eBay except for the one that I purchased in the hobby store in town for 80 bucks. Too expensive, but... You know, I wanted it right then, had to have some fun. So, the first one was this little red guy. Um, this is actually from a crash pack that I bought, but it was a red one like that. Um, and then later on purchased one of these. This is an H107C Hubson X4. It's a Hubson X4 H107L. The L, I believe, stands for light. The C, I think, stands for camera. This one comes with a recording camera built into the front. Uh, the shell does not have it inserted. Uh, and the L, I think, stands for light. It does not have a recording camera. Two major differences between these two. Aside from the form factor being visibly similar, the L is actually proportionally smaller. Um, the arms slightly a bit thinner. Um, it's the same uh, millimeters point to point, but everything is just slightly smaller aside and uh, as well as the undercarriage not having the compartment for the camera. Uh, second biggest difference and, and the biggest difference is the motors. The motors are uh, six or seven mil, uh, millimeter motors. Um, on the light version, whereas the camera version come with the 8.5 millimeter motors, um, which is uh, better, especially when you're buying aftermarket replacement motors or uh, the Chloe um, dark motors. Um, uh, those are the, the better and faster size. Um, so now that I've gone through that, uh, let me tell you my progression. So I found from uh, rc-drones.com or rcdrone.com, something like that, um, these Phoenix Flight Gear carbon fiber um, frames for, uh, I don't know what you call it, uh, micro quads of the Hubson variety, the Hubson, the QR Ladybird, um, things of that fashion that have either like seven or eight millimeter brushed motors and uh, uh, a solitary flight controller without ESCs or or uh, any of that other dealy bob um, integrated uh, uh, receiver. Um, so I found this one. This is a 110 millimeter carbon fiber, um, full carbon fiber frame. It's uh, one and a half millimeters thick. Um, pretty strong um, for the size that these are. I'm trying to get the best view possible in this light. Um, and uh, uh, there's some real uh, easy instructions on how to just basically paste your flight controller. Come on. Paste your flight controller with some double-sided tape uh, onto there and, and some Velcro for the battery. Um, and this is actually my third iteration of this frame. I've rebuilt it twice now um, and uh, just finished this iteration today. You can see how the motors are dropped down um, below the uh, points like the Hubsons do. Um, and I've actually taken two different battery compartments from the inside of Hubsons um, and used one to hold the battery on the top of this quad. And I modified the other one and used it to hold and protect the flight controller down on the bottom. And I got it held together with some screws. My uh, favorite thing to use on these is lots of heat shrink. <laughs> so I heat shrink my motors and my cables and, and all that kind of stuff. And then just use a little bit of fishing line to secure it around. Um, so this is uh, just finished tonight. I'm hoping it'll be a nice little racer um, like these ones. I'm hoping it'll be pretty strong um, as well as being much lighter. Come on. Much lighter than the Hubson. Um, I could weigh them here real quick for you. Let's see. All right, so grams there. 
Let's put this guy on upside down, I think, maybe. <laughs> I'm gonna pause. Okay, I removed the battery. I, I put it underneath the quad so I could balance it on there. And she is weighing 43.38 grams with battery. Now I'm pretty generous with things like heat shrink and um, hot glue. Although this one doesn't have a whole lot of hot glue. And these some extra pieces of plastic. Um, so that was 43 grams. Alright, done the same thing with my yellow Hubson minus camera, uh, which I haven't installed. And 44.91 grams is what I get. Um, <laughs> this one is only um, one gram heavier than the one that I've built. Uh, or should I say that the one that I put together here is only one gram lighter than the original Hudson. So I haven't really uh, gained much in the far as weight loss. But it's just super fun to make these things and to put them together and then fly them and see your creations go around. I'd recommend it for any of you guys who are liking your Hubsons. Um, uh, as far as props go, the the manufacturer Hubson props um, are fairly powerful um, but quality control is severely lacking I find uh, props that don't spin right um, all the time uh, and in fact some of the prop packs that I've ordered as much as um, all of the B props were bad and and, and that's just ridiculous um, this one right here is Rock and QR Ladybird props. Now they are not as powerful, not as severe a pitch as the Hubson props, but they are definitely a more stable prop. I find that the Hubsons just glide through the air like they're on ice with the QR Ladybird props. Um, those are the only two that I've used. I'm not sure that there's any difference between the standard uh, Hubson stock props or the Hubson props that you get labeled Hubson um, but I've had lots of them I haven't noticed much of a difference um, but yeah anybody looking to have a little fun with their Hubson change it up a little bit grab one of these 110 millimeter um, carbon fiber uh, kits from uh, RC drones or at phoenixflightgear.com all right bye